Chair, my name is Tim Waters. I'm going to be talking about Open Historical Map, uh, and in particular the technical changes of this project um, to the OpenStreetMap stack. Um, I have to apologize, I've got a bit of a sore throat. <laughs> so uh, I don't I, my voice will hold, but I won't be able to speak very loud. So if you can't hear me, make sure to use these ear things, and then there's a volume thingy on on the where where it comes from. Um, thank you. So um, I'm with Topper Mancy, and Topper Mancy's done a number of um, historical map projects with various organisations. Um, but Open Historical Map is a uh, it's more of a hobby project. Um, it is a very we have a very modest uh, project outline. Um, we w just want to make a map of everything that's ever existed. Any, at any time throughout history and actually prehistory. Um, and I, another nice tagline is that putting a time slider on the world, because everyone loves time sliders. Um, and it's the world's most out of date map. What it isn't quite is it isn't quite, there's a couple of good, good projects which um, display historical objects that currently exist in. OpenStreetMap that people have mapped, like castles and archaeological sites. Like Histosm is one, uh, and this is the, um, around the um, around Geneva area. You should check that out. It's a very nice project. But, but Open Historical Map isn't quite, although it does encompass these things. These things still exist as ruins or, or sites. Um, historical objects in the OSM is another one. So what is it? Open Historical Map is a separate database from a separate vector database from OpenStreetMap. And it's not a raster database, it's not um, a collection of historical maps. It is a, essentially the OSM stack built for things that used to exist or things that still exist but have some past to them. So on the background to the project, um, a lot of people were thinking about this in some of the earliest states of the maps. Uh, what in uh, Amsterdam, I think it was uh, 2009 or 8, uh, Frankie Roberto did a presentation about um, old buildings in Manchester. And he uh, mapped, well, he mapped the ages of the buildings in, in Manchester. And, and you can see that they, they range from uh, earlier than in the uh, 17th century to the present day ones. Um, but the presentation was a, and you should check it out, it's all online, it's on SlideShare, is that um, it said mapping historical objects within OpenStreetMap was really difficult um, because things change. And one of the things also that he mentioned was that you could have one building, which the front of the building would be a different age than the back of the building. And what do you do there? Because it's the same building. So the idea of um, representing historical objects in general was in, in many people's eyes. Um, my eyes? Mind. Um, it was generally a slow start to get the ball rolling. Everyone had great um, passion and enthusiasm for it, but you know, there's, there's immense interest, but um, a bit slow to get going. Some examples now, we get to see some pictures. In Scotland, uh, this is Hunterson on the um, west coast in Scotland. Uh, a mapper has um, mapped this um, area, this town of Hunterston, in the 19th century. So this is an open historical map. This doesn't. This representation is different from o OSM. And this is in this is in OSM. And just to compare the two, um, and the main difference you can see is that today there's a nuclear power reaction, reactor. Um, which I suppose says quite a lot about uh, change in time. In Denmark, um, this is in the northeastern part of Denmark, again in the 19th century, um, a guy has mapped the, um, the houses and the roads and the streets around this area. Um, and here is what it looks like in OpenStreetMap. And if you look, it's, it's slightly zoomed out a bit, but you might be able to tell that there are more houses in Open Historical Map than currently exist in Open Street Map. So the map, there's more mapping of the houses that used to exist than currently exist. Maybe they still do exist, actually. 
Um, Jerry um, has added Roman roads into a lot of the UK. Ultimately, we want to use this to do routing of um, using Roman roads within open historical maps. So you can do York to Rome via all the major routes. You can tell they're Roman roads because they're generally straight and they don't wobble a bit too much. Uh, a lot of these ones still exist, of course. Um, a lot of them aren't, aren't um, are no longer present. Um, uh, again, staying with the Roman theme, um, uh, the town of Mainz, I think it's in Germany, uh, someone has mapped um, the Roman settlement there. and it, So Open Historical Map uses the same um, Carto CSS map design as OpenStreetMap. So the, the, so the top left one is the Roman one. You can see the hatched red area. That is um, the fort. It's a military, military base. That's where the Roman fort was. Um, and then the open street map representation, of course, is much more detailed. There's more, there's more buildings in open street maps in that way. Um, um, you, can, you can roughly work out where the, the bridges remain the same. Uh, Rob Warren is an academic in uh, researcher in uh, Canada, is uh, mapping the trenches from the Great War, World War I trenches, and also artillery lo um, locations. Um, in uh, in Europe, and of course, you know the, it's very um, current with the anniversary of the of the First World War. You can see here the the, the lines as, as they've moved over time. So each line has a different um, attribute. I don't think this map hasn't been shown at this presentation yet, but it needs to be. This is a very if anyone knows GIS or a little bit of epidemiology, this is John Snow's infect, infected pump map, uh, and that title gives away the um, gives away the ending really. But um, it's um, essentially this is an area in London. It's the 19th century, uh, 1854, I think it is. Uh, John Snow was a doctor um, in this area, and he, there was a cholera outbreak. And he went round and um, talked to the people and mapped the locations where where the um, uh, where where people were dying. So all these red spots were the casualties, and um, you can see here there's like bar graphs almost against the street to represent more. You know, the cer certain houses where all the all the people within the house died. Um, he John Snow was um, he had this theory about cholera. At the time, people didn't realize how it was happening. So he was thinking, well, it must, maybe it comes from the water. So he also mapped where the uh, wells, the water supplies were. And he, um, and he basically sort of, he took the handle off the water pump next to it, right in, right in the center there, and helped, essentially. That was the polluted one. Um, in, incidentally, there's, a, there's another area just to the, the south of that where monks were brewing their own beer and they had their own sort of, basically the, 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 the brewing process for the weak beer um, uh, where was able to keep them alive, basically. Um, and today's it's called um, Brewery Live. So this is in Open Historical Map. Um, we have the same map with the, with the streets in Open Historical Map with the pump there somewhere. I think it is Broad Street. It's kind of over there. So you can see the similar uh, map there. Jeff, Jeff sitting up there, he um, mapped, mapped Seattle. Um, certain areas you can see where the blocks have changed considerably from lots of little houses to, I don't know, what it is, Starbucks perhaps. One big block of Starbucks. Burning Man, Mikhail Moran did a lot of work with Open Historical Map, and also he uh, went to Burning Man. Um, twice, I think, at least twice. We've got documentary proof that he went twice. Um, and it shifts, so it's in the same area of the desert, but it shifts over time. And this was in OpenStreetMap, so he went into OpenStreetMap 2008, put in what the player looked like. Went the next year, it's all changed. Uh, what do I do with the stuff? So it was. So in a sense, Open Historical Map was a way of 
capturing and keeping historical things in OpenStreetMap which no longer are there, is there, is there, are there. So OHM is a way for keeping and, and sort of archiving these, these, um, these uh, temporary things. Um, Manhattan, um, this is uh, an import of uh, a 1854 map, a Paris Atlas um, for Manhattan. I think there's 50,000 buildings or so, roughly. Um, all, all of these uh, building shapes were done by hand uh, within a, uh, you know, a clunky WFS um, editor, open layers based, by hand by um, one or two people and a few score groups and things over a few years. But you can see on the right that the, the amount of attribute information is quite rich, and the, um, the raster source also is... Uh, heavy in detail. This has been added into uh, Open Historical Map for that layer. Uh, nowadays, the MYPL are using um, something called Building Inspector, which um, get, it removes the tedium from tracing individually and get, it allows a computer to do most of it, or at least to, um, to, to have it in a, a better crowdsource interface. And the good thing about that is that the data is able to is is also exported and able to be used. And uh, one of the plans for RHM is to use use these data and import it into there. How to add stuff into Open Historical Map? We saw that um, with the um, Manhattan thing, there was a big import, so import a database. There are a number of institutions which have done historical maps before, of course, um, and they have good. Uh, good, good GIS databases. So they, those can be imported. A lot of things are traced from historical maps, out of copyright, old maps. Uh, one project would be the Wikimaps project. Yeah, this is a Wikimedia Commons. So if you have a historical map, in theory you can, uh, you, you can upload it, create an account, up, upload this uh, map to Wikimaps, um, add in the metadata, add in the the, the template, the map template, which is MAP, which is quite cool. Um, and that ha includes a link to the, that blue link, view the, view the map in the Warper. So the Warper is a Wikimaps thing, again, in the Commons. This is a Commons tool, which, uh, which enables people to georectify these things. Um, within that interface as well, there's an embedded ID editor, which uses that georectified um, image, and this is editing within Open Historical Map, so people can edit straight from a Wikimedia Commons environment. Um, and with that, the metadata about that map is stored with the edit and the change set. Uh, editing, if you've got JOSM, you can change the URL and preferences. It's reasonably straightforward. The, there is an embedded ID editor in the website, RHM website. The main tags for Open Historical Map is start date and end date, which uses the uh, ISO standard year, 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 month, month, day, day thing. However, you can just put the year. Um, a lot of other people would just say, well, circa 20th century, circa something, or Roman period. Um, so f some sort of free tagging. Um, and if you say where you got the, the, the data from, that would be nice as well. So that was quite a simple thing, just start date and end date. It's probably a bit too simple from, if you think about historical maps, it's um, you know, the, going back to Frankie's thing about one building having many different ages to it. Um, I, I like to think that Open Historical Map uses the OSM way of doing what works first and then figuring out how to fix it later. Um, I think someone said, well, you should just do whatever and let the renderers sort it out, which we'll get to that in a moment. So that's 292 users, so quite small. Hopefully everyone here will load up OHM and um, sign up and start contributing. There's over a million ways. There's uh, 106 nodes. Um, we've got six planet dumps so far. We aim to do one each, each week, although previously most of those were each month. Uh, and each one is 1.2 gigabytes uncompressed. Or is it compressed? No, I think that's compressed. 
Um, the stack itself, so getting into the te sort of more technical side of the stack, as we've seen in the previous um, talks. Stack, as we've seen, is the website, the API. You've got the editors. I include the editors. The, the database M export and how to get the changes. Uh, we, have the, we have an op overpass API, which uh, Richard set up, um, overpass.openhistoricalmap.org, so you can query it easily. And also um, the, the sort of tile stack. The website itself is extremely easy to get running. If, you're into, uh, if you know how uh, Ruby on Rails works and you want to develop on the website, um, just two lines, really. Vagrant up, Vagrant SSH, and then one, when you're in there, in there uh, basically this starts up a virtual machine in your local development environment. It adds all the libraries, adds the database, loads up uh, like a basic user, and, and gets, gets things running. So it's very easy to hack on it. The uh, images there, you can see we changed some of the text. And that's pretty much what we've, what we've done with the website, was just changing a few sort of text strings. Um, the embedded ID editor, again, we, um, uh, we've, we've hacked the um, translations here to change you know, open, open street map to open historical map. Uh, we've also removed Bing imagery because Bing has allowed OSM to use it, but not, well, who knows, they, we haven't asked them. So uh, open historical map is slightly different. Uh, also, it's current day, uh, Bing, you see things in current day, so is, is it much of use? Uh, database replication is we use osmosis to um, keep things uh, replicated with the tile server. No changes here from what um, is on the wiki. Overpass, as we see, overpass uses the generated planet, um, and I don't think there's any mu much customization to that yet uh, in terms of sort of uh, date range queries. And the map generation is um, where we get a bit more technical now. We might actually see some lines of code which can, can confuse people. Um, OSM2 PGSQL is a, um, a little program which gets OSM data, in, in our case OHM data, and puts it into another database suitable for use for rendering maps. There's tr there are two lines here, or well, actually three lines, in the bold. We, we're using a custom style sheet, uh, OHM style, and also a custom tags transform script. There's not many tag, tag transform scripts out in the wild. Um, I think this is a good use for one of them, perhaps. The style here, we can. This, so this is where we basically choose the tags from uh, the OSM database, what to put into the map rendering database. Here we basically choose start date and end date, of course, um, as a date type. So post -gis, uh, Postgres date type. We're able to store, and again, we can query using date types within Mapnik and other uh, things. Uh, we're also creating two new um, fields uh, for the um, year. And this is used um, for the track transform script. So Kai Kruger uh, developed this system. It uses Lua, Lua scripting language, which um, transform tags so it passes all the tags and, and can transform them, merge things together if need be, like a, you know, bridge name and bridge colon name. You can merge them all into one, which can make your maps quicker. Um, and, and there's a certain way of um, creating this script. Um, so in our open historical map script, um, we have to pass out at the text form of the date into, um, into uh, an integer, essentially. Or in, into, the, an, into a nice format so that Postgres can read it as a date and also um, um, as, as the integer. And as you can see there, the um, Postgres has the date type, but it only goes as far back as 4713 BC because um, someone made a decision that nothing existed before that time. Um, so this is why we have to, um, this is why I, I've chosen to use the integer version of the year, so it can go further back if we need to. Um, and so this, this bit essentially gets the year and converts it. 
Um, so choosing, having the year, having the year dates in the, um, in the map database, a map rendering database, post gesture database is very useful, of course, because now we can do map tiles for any tile period or any range. Um, and um, which, so here, um, essentially we create a view then of saying, instead of a, the table, we, we create a view saying, select from that where the, the date equals something. Um, it's all very straightforward. And then using that view as the table name within the uh, Mapnik or uh, Carte CSS project. Um, a, a GNOME um, OPW intern works with the Open Historical Map project uh, on mod tile. And she um, made it so that it, you can pass down um, a date to the tile URL and it will go through mod tile into render D and query the database directly. So all this stuff with um, creating the views and things should be, well, that takes, that takes it's, not, it's not too bad, but it just take, it is a bit of a, a nightmare. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not much of a nightmare. Um, so, so this hopefully should solve that problem. Um, but I don't know C++. If you do, if you, or, or it may even be in C, I don't know. I can, I can see there's a, there's a star T, so I think that's something. But that, that desperately needs review. If you're interested in looking at it at the hack day, please do. And if we can get it working, that would be awesome. Um, so some of the future things, we've got overpass for the queries. Maybe that, this might be a way of, of um, having an API into the database, a view into the database, which able to, you, know, you, you should be able to do a query of all the buildings with this, with this name between the years 1800 to 1850, for example. Um, we've got the ID filter. Oh, one thing I, I should have mentioned. So these, these um, the, uh, if we go back to the uh, thing about the player. Uh, oh, do, 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 do. There we go. Oh, there we go. So these two um, things on the right are separate um, tiles. So we've got three tile sets at the moment live on OHM. One showing everything. Uh, one and then one showing 2008, and one showing 2009. So it's possible to do, as we've seen, um, manually date ranges, uh, tile sets for a specific year or between two years. Uh, but it, but it does, of course, we can't do it for everything because we're going to run out of disk space. Um, so the future stuff, um, ID filtering. Um, Sajad was working on. ID and the filtering of large objects, which naturally would also lend itself to filtering anything. Um, we're, I'm, I, w I would like to look at somehow having a range filter on an integer or, or, or a date or something like that. I think it may be a bit tricky. Um, the review of the mod tile thing, excuse me. <clears throat> uh, mod tile review to prob propagate that date range down. Um, using vector tiles. Um, so you can have all the data. You don't need to do any views or anything. You just need to possibly change the style to do it. Um, this, this project may even be the poster child for front-end JavaScript vector rendering because you, your front-end JavaScript can do that filtering and show that data. Um, and why not put it on the front page as well? Um, and maybe... Uh, improvements to the user interface. This is what I, this is what I work on. Um, improvements to the interface of the um, georectifying the historical maps and, the, and getting the paper maps into the system where people can start tracing them. And um, so please join in. We've got um, the website, of course, is openhistoricalmap.org. Um, on IRC, please come along and chat. Um, this is a good place where um, people do. Um, have a little chat. There, there's a um, on the OpenStreetMap mailing list. We have the historic one, so please join up with that. And pretty much all this code and more is on uh, the Open Historical Map um, GitHub <clears throat> organization page. So 
please do come along to the Hack Day, and if you're interested in that, um, we'll be working on it as well. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, we've got a question. very little controversy over the subject of imports and I think it's nice that people aren't insisting on ground truth uh, under the circumstances. So the comment was um, it, it, um, based uh, compared to OpenStreetMap there's been controversy about imports um, and the comment was about um, it is nice seeing that there's no controversy about imports with Open Historical Map. I think I agree actually. Yeah. That is good. I think, I think um, being able to work with these institutions and academics with, these, with the data is going to be crucial. And I think there's interest also for, from them seeing other people using their data and their work. Oh, yep, we've got, we've got a question. Uh, so the question is, how do we handle uh, Julian dates and other cal calendars, etc.? Um, yeah, that is a big um, that is a big question. That's a very good question because a lot of um, historical things and don't don't uh, work on the same calendar system. Um, so this is the so the postgres dates um, type is the Gregorian calendar, which probably is one of the reasons why it goes back to. One four seven something because it, maybe it's zero or something, or the Julian calendar. I don't know. Uh, it is a complex one. I think uh, we, we're going to develop better. We must develop better ways of passing dates from various sources and then converting them. Yeah. So that, yeah. So. So, yeah, so, so the, um, well, there's more of a comment, is that um, um, wiki, wiki data is also being used, and uh, there, there is, there, yeah, there, there also happened a challenge with this, um, the different calendar systems through history. Uh, any other questions? Oh, here's one. Here we go. So I was kind of going off that import question with, um, with when you bring in old information, I find a lot of times the roads can be very far off from where they actually are. And how do you update that over time? Because maybe in 1910, it was very far off. In 1920, they got very close. And maybe that road is still there, or maybe it's not. But if, especially if it's not still there, how do you kind of keep those maps to say, this is the same object, but now it's in a different place, but we don't know which one is really correct? Yeah, so the, so the question, um, which is uh, a, a very cr sort of crucial question, really, is about um, how, if you have imports from different time periods of the same thing, say the same road, how do you know which one is correct if, if one has moved or maybe if the base map that someone's tracing from is wrong, wrong as well. How has that moved? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> that, that would be a good um, problem to solve. And maybe even linking them together could be a, a good way somehow, like a relation or something like that. Yeah. Ground truth. Oh, and that's the end. Thank you very much. Uh, if we have a break.